hi guys I hope you're doing well in this video I'm going to share a trick in Google Earth that will be useful for geoscientists also for the people who really like to go to extremely located areas to see some natural spectacles and uh, see some beautiful landscapes I have uh, prepared uh, an, uh, an example in here to uh, discuss Imagine that we're going to go uh, to the destination in this place mark uh, or our study area is highlighted for example by red borders in this case it is located in the south of Sirjan city so the only thing we have to do is to go to Sirjan uh, move towards the south and then uh, go to our final destinations it's important to highlight that uh, some uh, there are a lot of uh, smartphone apps that uh, makes it easy to go to destinations but in terms of remotely located areas um, and off-road tracks uh, it, it would not be uh, you know sufficient for us so we have to check our destination in terms of accessibility or roads and in this case we see that there is a very small off-road track in here and we can either go upward towards north which will be this way and all the way to this location in the main road alternatively we can also use the uh, south uh, pathway which is uh, also uh, getting somewhere in here and if we move towards our main road uh, it seems to be accessible uh, too so imagine uh, so if we just check it you know in the first uh, site it seems that the northern pass is you know closer so what we have to do the only thing we have to do is to you know move by our car to this off-road track and then continue our path to the final destination but uh, finding the re you know the exact place uh, to enter the, an off-road is not sometimes easy so it is better to uh, have an idea uh, where it is exactly located the best option is to in fact draw a polyline uh, of the you know off-road track and then save it as KMZ file converting it to the GPX format to be used in handheld GPS then we will have in fact a map to uh, to achieve our final destination and it will be amazing uh, some of you may be uh, cu curious to know that uh, for example what happens if we do not do this in fact when you're going to remotely located areas and you're using off-road uh, to achieve your destinations there will be a lot of dilemmas for example in this case there is a dilemma in here and if you move the wrong way you just you will be just uh, you know mixed up and you will end up another dilemma in here and it's not just here you know there will be a lot of dilemmas it, it is not you know a paved road to be able to uh, have some you know really known options it is just uh, sometimes uh, unknown and you will be mixed up in the car you don't know where to move and you, if you move to some kind of a wrong road and you will be you know you will save you will in fact uh, lose a lot of time and a lot of energy as well so it is not very good so the only thing we have to do is to draw a polyline we use add pass option and we will draw a polyline involving the uh, road to achieve our final destination in, in areas where there is no dilemma we can use relatively long spaced vertexes but in the case of dilemmas we have to use more vertexes because it will be very uh, in fact helpful believe me it is very helpful when you're just moving your car uh, and you know uh, 
finding your way with the GPS in your hand. So imagine that we have in fact finished our pathway creation to the final destination. We will click on OK and we will uh, add up in our place lists. I have done this before. This is pass number one. I have done this to save a bit of time. And this is our pass towards the destination in here. Also, also there is another pass from the south. Uh, I, have sh I have shown it in green. So in, in this place you will see that there are two pathways and we want to know which one is closer. The only thing is to do, the only uh, thing to do is to just uh, click right on the pass, go to properties and go to measurements. In uh, the uh, pass number two is 21.9 kilometers, uh, while pass number one is 15.7, so it is closer. Also, it is essential to have a look about the ele elevation variations in the road. So, for example, in pass number one, you will see it relatively gently sloped, gently sloped uh, uh, pass, so it is relatively good. Also, pass number two is gently sloped. So, uh, in cases that you're going to some kind of a rock terrain and uh, you are not uh, very sure which one is the best option you have to check the elevation profile because this uh, shortest uh, way to a destination is not always the safest one. Also, it's uh, essential to have all of these lines in your, you know, converted and, and important to your GPS because sometimes seasonal floods uh, could wash off, uh, wash the road, and uh, it will be, uh, in, uh, it makes you unable to. Uh, cross that so you have to for example leave the the middle leave your pass in the middle of the road and try the other option so uh, I think it would be sufficient for this uh, uh, you know explanation in here the only thing now remains is how to have it in your GPS so just right click on that save place as save it as KMZ file I have done this before I have pass number one and pass number two uh, files and just open your browser uh, to convert them to GPX. So KMZ to GPX. There will be a lot of uh, websites doing this for you. I have chosen this way. I will put its link in the description of the video if you want to use this as well. And uh, in here we have to upload our file. So I will choose my file which is pass number one. And it is selected, and I'm going to have the output format of GPX. So, clicking on convert, and in several seconds, it is done. Just clicking and then download, it is downloaded. And you can, in fact, have it in your file. So, this is the GPX format and, uh, of the pass number one. We can import it into our GPS and uh, use it uh, while planning our field trip to our destination. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed our video. If you uh, enjoyed this video uh, or any content in our uh, page, uh, in our YouTube channel, just let us know by your likes or subscription. Uh, and also, if you have any ideas and if you have any comments, uh, we will be happy to have your ideas in the comment section. Thank you and have a good day.